Mercedes-Benz currently makes no less than 11 SUVs and we wouldn't judge you for finding some of them difficult to tell apart. That's, strong design language, for you. Today we're looking at two in the middle of the size spectrum, the GLC Coupe and the GLE. Okay, the scene is set. Let's look at the differences and hopefully help determine which will be best for you. Side by side the GLC and GLE are very similar looking things, and they aren't too far apart in size terms either. The GLE isn't much longer than the GLC, despite having two additional seats, which means it doesn't feel too much bigger on the road, albeit the GLE has a notably taller, flat-nosed front end. The main visual differentiator is the styling of the front daytime running lights, DRLs, which are a distinctive twin aerotype arrangement in the GLE, while the GLC has a single light strip running along the top of the headlamp unit. See our GLC Color Guide or GLE Color Guide for more details on your paint and color options. The key difference is really in the cabins. The GLC is a newer model, released in mid-2022, and so it's very modern and features some impressive tech, not least its portrait orientation touchscreen that curves up the dashboard from the center console. It's lovely to use and a massive leap forward from the old scroll wheel system that Mercedes used to employ in the GLC. There's no doubt that the GLE's more executive underpinnings and higher price make for a higher end feel, though. Twin displays act as your instrument panel and infotainment screen, controlled by a trackpad on the dashboard. It's not quite as flashy as the newer setup in the GLC. The GLE came out in 2019 but it's arguably more intuitive to use because there's more physical switchgear for functions like temperature control. The main practicality difference is the number of seats that each has. The GLC is a 5-seat SUV, while the GLE can come with 7 seats, two of them sequestered under the boot floor. The choices you make with a GLE have various effects on the practicality. So, choose a basic GLE and your boot space is a colossal 630 liters, and you can even slide the rear bench forward to liberate 825 liters, but if you choose a plug-in hybrid version that number drops to 490 liters because of the packaging of the hybrid bits. Lifting the rear most seats in a 7-seat version of course reduces boot capacity significantly, but still leaves enough for a good few shopping bags. Elsewhere the GLE is, of course, hugely accommodating, with an enormous amount of headroom and leg space front and back, aside from those two rearmost seats, which are naturally very tight. Because the latest GLC has grown compared to the outgoing model, the practicality gap has closed between it and the GLE. The boot capacity is only 10 liters smaller and there's very nearly as much cabin space, Rear passengers will find the GLC a little cozier than the GLE, but it's still very adult-friendly. Cabin space in both is broadly the same, with deep door pockets and a quite large enclosed storage cubby between the front seats. Basically, the GLE is a bit bigger and has 7-seat flexibility, but there's surprisingly little difference between it and the GLC in space terms. Again, this is a close thing, largely because the engines come from the same parts shelf. Some versions of the GLE and all of the GLC come with mild hybrid electric assistance called EQ Boost, which not only provides a little power bump during acceleration, but also takes strain off the engine with gentler driving to improve consumption. You'll never know it's working. A huge choice of engines is available. In the GLC's case, the base model is a 2.0-liter diesel called 220D which returns 52 mpg officially, while the base 2.0-liter petrol GLC 300 returns 37 mpg, and that one is quick too, hitting 62 miles per hour in just over 6 seconds. The GLE's base choice is also a 2.0-liter diesel, badged GLE 300D, which returns 39 mpg. These are not cheap cars to run. Most GLEs, for instance, sit in the 37% BIC tax bracket, save for the plug-in hybrid, more on which shortly, and insurance groups are high, but they at least offer reasonable day-to-day -day fuel economy. 
A huge choice of engines is available. In the GLC's case, the base model is a 2.0-liter diesel called 220D which returns 52 mpg officially, while the base 2.0-liter petrol GLC 300 returns 37 mpg, and that one is quick too, hitting 62 miles per hour in just over 6 seconds. The GLE's base choice is also a 2.0-liter diesel, badged GLE 300D, which returns 39 mpg. These are not cheap cars to run. Most GLEs, for instance.